What is up everyone? So recently a lot of people have been asking me if I still do Smash Ultimate Sessions and yes, actually I still do and I never stopped. I've been doing it now for roughly 4 years. Any player level is welcome. I've had tons of sessions with people who literally got Smash one week before their session. Obviously I've also had a ton of mid-level players, high-level players, and even top-level players that you currently see in tournament. Most of which probably want to remain nameless. Either way, they all get much better with each session. There's been a ton of students who couldn't win a single game in tournament, and now they're either winning their locals or consistently making top 3. And if you want to book one or just generally get more information about the session, then you can click the Discord link below, join it, and private message me. Also, sessions are also streamed to allow you to re-watch your session on Twitch. Unless you don't really want it to be streamed, which is fine, it doesn't have to be. Anyways, during the stream, I mentioned everything that you do, don't do, could do better or differently, and we'll also talk about it right after. As well as I'll teach you anything that you need to learn at your current level, I'll answer any question, and I'll give you a plan for what to work on and how. Also, usually high to top level players don't usually fight me for best of five, instead what they do is that they bring me VODs to review, and that way I guess it's more relevant to them because they learn how to beat what they need to beat in the current moment. Anyways, feel free to hit me up on Discord and enjoy the video. Link's bomb play has always been one of the most interesting parts about Smash Ultimate, and has advanced like crazy for the past few months. The techniques that will be shown here can be really hard to pull off, and most likely the very last thing you'll want to try mastering with Link after have already mastered the simplicity of him first, as these techniques can easily be what pushes him to a potential top tier. And even though they're very situational, it'll be something that you'll be able to get much more than you think. First of all, Bomb Loops, which will work on most of the cast, and even more reliably after around 60 to 70 percentage depending on the character. The Z-Drop can be automatically done by buffering Jump and Z-Grab at the same time, and then it's just about immediately flicking the C-Stick for forward air or back air, and fast fall manually, dash for a few frames and release the stick into another short hop Z-Drop buffer. Obviously, you don't have to buffer anything, you could also simply short hop normally and time the Z-Drop, time the C-Stick and fast fall too, and it'll be up to you what you're most comfortable with while practicing. And then it's just about doing it over and over again until it eventually after a while becomes easy and natural. Typically you'll want to end it with spin attack, but you could also end things with Z-Drop down air. Or at the percents where forward air to spin attack won't combo or kill, you could even try going for back air into Z-Drop footstool, press Z as you footstool, C-Stick down to lock them, fast fall and forward smash. You can also start these setups at 0% on a majority of the cast, by hitting a close range boomerang, short hop z-drop nair, into a short hop z-drop down air. Another potential kill confirm can be started from a full hop Z-drop Nair fast ball. Anything from 40 to around 70%. If the opponent doesn't DI or DI's in, you could either kill with forward air or spin attack. DI away can still be something that Link can potentially threaten with a kill as well, just not as reliably. Anyways, to execute this, it's honestly not too hard. You jump, Z-drop Nair, fast ball, dash, short hop, Z-drop the bomb, and footstool jump towards the blast zone either a short footstool or a high footstool, depending on the percents of course. And while footstooling, you can detonate the bomb with a very slight delay. The detonation of the bomb doesn't have to be buffered, but if you wait too long, they'll be able to shield. Either way, this is a super fun and fairly easy combo to try killing an opponent super early with.
theory, this means that Link can potentially start looking for kill confirms as long as the opponent is above 40% with Nair Z dropped into any of these combos. As well, as some characters might even be at risk of death starting at 0% if they have big bodies or are floaty as you could start things with Boomerang or the strong hit of Nair as well. And as precise as it seems, it's very realistic to do consistently since it's not that hard and is actually somewhat similar both in application and difficulty as Fox's Wave Shine in Melee. As just like Z-Drop, Shine out of shield would also be frame 4, and most setups would start from a down air or nair into Wave Shine up smash finishers, which happens all the time. The next advanced technique is going to be the Footstool Z-Drop loop, which honestly has a pretty simple but very precise execution. It starts with a short footstool, Z-Drop as soon as you footstool, Fast fall and footstool and double tap the Z button. Fast fall, footstool, double tap the Z button, and land with back air to start a Z drop forward air and back air loop. You also don't actually have to do any kind of loop. You can just simply footstool, Z drop, fast fall, footstool again, press Z, C stick down, and start whatever you want. Attempting a bomb loop infinite is something that in theory works against a few characters, but it's not reliable nor competitively viable at all, honestly. The footstool out of shield will be more so great to punish cross-ups, as well as it can be more beneficial at lower percents where you won't be able to Z-drop to fair or bear loop anyway, as the footstool will allow you to set up for other neat setups that also can end up killing. The final thing I want to talk about is the Bomb Ledge Trap, which is one of the most potent and low committal ledge traps in the game with little answers. First off, there are two ways that you can plant the bomb at the very edge. You can either down throw it and dash away, or what I personally like to do is to short hop a Z drop at the peak of the jump and double jump backwards. The main reason why I personally like to do the double jump backwards is because it visually looks like the roll is a viable option that Link won't have time to cover. And so it'll condition them to go for it more as it'll usually be the best way to get around the trap if they can. But Link will in fact always have time to cover the roll, with fastball back air 1 or nair which will push them back into the bouncing bomb to combo for spin attack or forward smash. The down throw to dash away is still good, but it makes it a bit more clear that the opponent won't be able to roll, and honestly, you want that juicy roll. Typically, Link will only have to worry about doing three kinds of options with this setup. Detonating, shielding, or using a grounded option such as forward tilt, up smash, or spin attack for example. As long as you time the Z-drop correctly, it'll bounce and be a hitbox for longer than the opponent's invincibility at the ledge. So if you know they want to stall, you can always detonate it. And if they get away with timing their option just right, you'll still be fine and can pressure them. Detonating it early or as soon as you see any kind of movement should also be done if you keep seeing the opponent using ledge jump or double jumping in against the bouncing bomb. If you don't react to it the first few times, it's fine, as it'll just knock them off again and Link will basically just have to ledge trap on his own now. And so basically, against ledge jump, double jump, and ledge stall, you'll want to detonate the bomb. If they don't roll early and roll once Link is grounded, or if they go for regular getup, you'll simply want to either spin attack, forward tilt, or up smash. And finally, if they get up attack, you'll want to block and spin attack out of shield. Once the opponent is anticipating the bomb lit trap, you could also start picking up the bomb and mixing it up by Z-dropping it offstage instead, throwing it and detonating it, or let it bounce for the trap to begin and try to double jump back with down air. If you hit the bomb, you'll extend the spiking frames by roughly 9 frames. And even if you don't get the spike, the bomb will be set up and ready. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you thought about this video. Also, lately, YouTube has not really been going as well as usual and the pay is extremely low and barely doable. So if you can, please help me out on Patreon as even one single dollar is going to help much more than you think. And come by my Twitch if you ever want to see me live. I stream almost every day from 3pm to 9pm EST. Anyways, thank you and I'll see you guys next time.